Okay, there we go. We're recording. All right, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. All right, I see thumbs. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, it's 7.05. I say we go ahead and get started. Welcome to Painting Through the Pandemic. I'm so happy that you guys are here tonight. Um, I love this. Every Saturday night, it gives me something to look forward to. Um, so thank you all for joining me. This makes me super happy to see that we still have a following and people are still painting. Um, I like to mention it every week. I still don't know when the studio is gonna open, the physical studio space. Uh, hopefully this fall sometime, just kind of waiting to see what COVID does. Um, when the studio does open, we'll continue to do this though. I'm getting a uh, Wi-Fi at the studio, so I'll be able to stream and teach uh, classes in the studio. So don't worry, you'll still be able to join me. Okay, um, just like every week, Let's, before we get started, let's run through our supply list. Let's do an inventory, make sure we have everything we need. With that said, if you need supplies from the studio, um, I have everything you need except fan brushes. I know a couple of you requested fan brushes. Those are, um, I'm waiting on those to be shipped. They should be here, um, they should be here middle of next week sometime. Um, if you have a question, I see somebody just raised their hand. If you have a question, uh, type it in the chat feature. I'm monitoring the chat feature um, over on my laptop. Okay, so supplies inventory. Um, if you need supplies, let me know. I'll hook you up through the cabinet in the back. Okay, first things first, I have my inspiration painting, my inspiration picture. Let's talk a little bit about this. So this isn't mine. This is just something that we found online, probably Pinterest, and it made us happy and everybody decided they wanted to paint it. So ours is going to look similar to this. We're going to use this as inspiration, but it's not going to look exactly like this because if you look really close at this picture, it's painted, it's uh, created with either watercolors or pastels or a combination of both. I feel like the sky is watercolor, but the grass, the ground, the trees are probably um, maybe pastels, chalk or oil pastels, I can't tell. I am pretty sure though that it's not acrylic paint. So we're gonna, um, we're gonna struggle trying to get it to look exactly like this. But again, this is our inspiration. We're just gonna go with it and see where it takes us, okay? So I always have my inspiration picture. While we're talking about our inspiration picture, let's map it out a little bit. Find the center of your canvas and go down a little bit. That's gonna be our, um, our perspective, our pinpoint right there that everything's gonna lead back to. That's where our sun is. That's where our little path winds up, okay? That's our light source. So if you look up real close, you can see our light source is emanating out from there, which means our trees are all very dark, but on the insides of those trees closest to the light source, you're going to have a nice highlight. The trees on this side, they're going to have the highlight on this side of them. Okay, we'll talk about that a little more later, but I want to I want to get you thinking about that already. The highlights on the side of these hills right here the shadow that maybe this light is pushing this tree into shadow. Ponder those things, start rolling them around in your brain. So there's our inspiration picture. I'm gonna put that down. And take my handy dandy sign and move it out the way. Okay, I have an apron on. If you don't have an apron, um, you're gonna to wanna to find a paint shirt, something that you don't mind getting paint on. It's really easy when you're painting um, to rub your sleeve through your paint, to flick paint places. So make sure that you have your surroundings protected. Make sure that you have a paint shirt or an apron on. I still have aprons at the studio if anybody needs them. Okay, and they're just like this. They don't have my name on them, but they do have Crooked Door Studio um, embroidered on them. Okay, so apron, paint shirt, canvas. The canvas that I have tonight is a 16 by 20 stretch canvas. You're gonna wanna make sure and paint your edges as you go. Um, that way your painting wraps all the way around. Something I usually like to think about too, this, our inspiration painting is very vertical. I think you could paint it, uh, you could paint it landscape if you wanted. Up to you, think about it. It's your painting, right? I think looking at our inspiration painting, I think it works well either way. So ponder that while we go through the rest of our supplies before we get started. 
Okay, so I have a water cup for my brushes. I always like to use, um, I have a mason jar. I use these at the studio. You could use a coffee cup. I like to use something with some weight to it. I'm less likely to knock it over if it's a heavy glass object. Um, only fill it halfway full. You don't need to fill it all the way up with water. Halfway full with cool or cold water. Our brushes, oh, paper towels to blot your brushes off on. Our brushes that we were gonna need tonight, the standard brushes we always use. I have a big wash brush for my background. I have a medium brush. I'm using a medium filbert. If you're looking for measurements, he's, I don't know, quarter, quarter inch wide, but he's kind of skinny that way. Something that I can use to do my trees, right? And to do my little path. And then I have a liner brush. The liner that I'm using is a number five. Up to you. This one I feel pretty good with in being able to do my smaller branches on my trees. So I have my big, my medium, my little. When I'm not using them, I'm gonna leave them in the water cup. So take your brushes, your brushes you're gonna use tonight and pop them in your water cup, leave them there. That's a good reminder that when you're done using a brush, it goes back in the water cup with his friends. That way it doesn't dry out, okay? Um, I also have a toothbrush. I'm gonna to use this to splatter my stars in the sky. And I'll show you how to do that when time gets close. He doesn't have to live in the water cup. I'm just gonna lay him to the side. And then extra supplies, I always keep a paint marker. I say it every week. I am really bad at signing my name with a brush. So I always keep a paint marker handy to be able to sign my paintings, okay? Just something I have in my art bag. All right, and let's talk about paint. So the paint that I have tonight, I have white. And don't let these, don't go by these amounts because I lost my mind when it came to the green. I got way too much green. So I have white, yellow, any kind of yellow will do. Phthalo blue. I like phthalo blue because it's nice and dark. It's gonna be real helpful for me to get that dark night sky. Right beside it, I have phthalo green. That's the one where I goofed and I have way too big of a puddle of it there. I like the phthalo green because it's a little emerald, a little turquoisey, And I love to mix phthalo green with a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white. And that gives me more of a limey color. So phthalo green, brown. I, have, I am using raw umber. You can use raw umber, burnt umber, just some kind of a brown. It's like a milk chocolate brown for our path. Whatever brown you have is fine. If you don't have a brown, start mixing some of your colors together. The best way to get, um, to get a brown is to mix opposites on the color wheel. So if you look at a color wheel, that would be blue and orange would give you brown. Purple and yellow would give you brown. Red and green would give you brown, okay? We don't need much of it, just enough to get a dirt path on there, and then black, okay? So that's what I have in the way of paint tonight. So let's talk a little bit about how this is gonna work. All right, I'm gonna do it a little different tonight. If you've painted with me before, you might think that I'm gonna start in the sky and work my way down. I'm gonna do it a little bit different tonight. I want my ground, not my path, but I want my ground on either side of my path nice and dark. If I put blue and green, which is what it looks like uh, this ground has on it, if I just put blue and green on there, the acrylic paint that I'm using, the student grade Blick acrylic paint, is so transparent, I'm gonna have a hard time getting it dark enough to make me happy because it is a night sky, right? That sun is just setting. Or is it the moon coming up? I don't know. Mind blown. Anyway, it's up to you, it's your world, right? It's your painting. I think I'm gonna say sun setting. Anyway, I'm gonna have a real hard time getting that ground dark enough with a white canvas. So I'm gonna start by sketching out where my path belongs. And then to the left and the right of my path, I'm gonna paint that black so it can dry. Then I'm gonna go up to the sky with a little bit of black, down into the blue and white, and we'll work it that way, okay? 
So with that said, our light source, our perspective, our point, right there, it's the middle of the canvas, down a little bit, down, I don't know, about an inch or so. So let's find that big brush. I'm gonna squish that guy around in the water cup, dry him off on paper towel, big brush. And this is gonna be aggressive, but I'm gonna do it with black. If this makes you really nervous, you can sketch with just a wet brush to get an idea. So you can see it with the water, but I'm just gonna dig right in with black. So my big brush, I'm gonna take, anytime you take paint, always in the edge. So I'm gonna take just the littlest bit of black right there. Ooh, just a, just a tiny, tiny bit to do some sketching. So find the middle of your canvas and go down about an inch. And that's where, um, that's where your path disappears and your sun is setting or your moon is coming up, however you wanna look at it. And I love that the ground is down in the middle and it kind of hooves up on the left and hooves up on the right. So I'm gonna use this brush skinny ways and I'm gonna put in the left side of the ground and the right side of the ground. I love that it's not straight across. I love that it's a very, um, there's a lot of movement back there but it's higher on the sides and dips down in the middle a little bit. Okay, so once I have that, I'm gonna put my path in there. Now your path is gonna get real super duper duper skinny right at the horizon line because it's gonna disappear. It's gonna go back to a point and disappear. And as, you, as your path comes down, comes toward you, it's gonna get wider. So I think what I might do is map out where it's gonna go to down here. And there's a little less room over here and a little more room over here. So I think what I'm gonna do, this is pro it's probably about three fingers down here. Give myself a little mark so I know where I'm going to. And then, so it's not all even matchy matchy. I'm gonna come down to like a big old fat hand width down here. Just putting little marks so I know where my path is gonna live. And my path is not gonna be straight. It's gonna meander, okay? But it has to stay really skinny and get wide down here. So with a little bit of black, let's tackle the left-hand side. Love that there's a little curve here and curves in, comes out. Just tackle one side at a time. Don't let this weird yell. Just one side at a time. Now, as I get ready to tackle the right hand side, it's almost like a puzzle, right? It's like they're like puzzle pieces. They have just separated a little. So I'm gonna try and mimic that same thing over there, getting further apart as we go, okay? So like a puzzle, like this, further apart. Oh, that got a little weird, but that's okay didn't quite make it over to my mark. See how they're kind of like a puzzle. They just kind of like pulled apart there. I'm liking where this is going already, you guys. I'm liking this. I'm liking it a lot. So now I want to get that dark base underneath where my blue green grass is going to go. Let's paint the ground on either side black. That sounded very abrupt. Let's paint that black. So just the ground, not the path. Let's get this piece black and this piece black, okay?
<sighs> and breathe. This is my reminder. This is my reminder to my sweet friend, Alicia. Take a big, deep breath, sister. It's going to be okay. <sighs> breathe it out. This is my reminder to you, too, that if, if things are getting weird and you're like, oh, it's not turning out the way it should and you're starting to get frustrated, remember, I am recording this. If you start to get frustrated, it shouldn't, shouldn't be frustrating, right? You should be able to just, just breathe and roll and let it be what it's going to be. And if it starts to make you crazy, put your brushes down, put them in the water cup, walk away, come back to this later, okay? Some, sometimes I have to do that, right? Um, I think that's the biggest thing about being an artist is accepting that things are gonna be the way they're gonna be. They're not always gonna turn out the way I think they should. That's okay. That's part of being an artist is being okay with that. So if you're having a hard time being okay with the way it's turning out, it's time to take a break, okay? because I am recording it and you can come back to it later. It was funny last week, I remember saying, oh, I'll get the recording up soon. And then I said, oh, every time I say that, I have technology challenges. Um, I live out in the country, so I'm at the mercy of my internet sometimes. And don't you know, I thought I was gonna be able to get the video posted up and it didn't happen as fast as I would have liked. Never does. So I will try to get this video up. With that said, I will try to get this video up uh, tomorrow. Hopefully tonight, maybe tomorrow sometime. And because you guys voted, we already have our painting chosen for next week, which I'm super excited about it. If you're not sure what the painting is, I'll post it up tomorrow with all the details. But it's a, it's a, uh, like a dark purple sky starting to get a little Halloween-y. It's a dark purple sky with, um, I think a tree, excuse me, a tree and a fence in like black silhouette. That should be lovely. And then the week after that is gray with then some really bold fall colors, like tree, um, tree branch, like dripping, dripping water, dripping leaves into water. So I have the next two paintings chosen already. Well, you guys chose the paintings by voting for them on uh, Facebook. So we'll do the same thing for September because that was fun. That was much less stressful having you guys pick what we paint. And to those of you that have sent me ideas for paintings, thank you so much. Again, that makes my life so much easier. Okay, so if you're painting on a stretched canvas, make sure and get your edges. I've already wrapped around on this side and painted that left side black. I'm gonna make sure and get over there and paint that right side black. And I'm going to step away for just a moment. My bulldog's on the struggle bus. I'll be right back. If she wants to see, I can get covered up. Oh, there you go. How's that? Is that better? Okay. All right, let's take another few minutes and finish that black. And then we're gonna head up into the sky with black. So don't worry about clean water. Don't worry about getting your brush super duper clean because we're gonna start with black and then work our way into blue and white in the sky. So I know a lot of you like to have clean water I'll tell you when the time comes for clean water. Not yet. We'll want clean water before we uh, splatter our stars, okay? And I'll let you know when that's going to happen.
Okay. Things got a little weird here for me. My line got a little, a little goofy. It's okay, I can fix it with my path. But I wanted to make sure and get that dark base on there. Because again, I know my um I know my blue and my green aren't strong enough to give me a really strong base. You'd be able to see every brush stroke and it'd look real wishy-washy. Okay, it's 726, 730, we'll move on to the sky. This doesn't have to be dry. Just make sure you've got a good, a good coat of black on there and you've got your edges. So oh, three minutes, we'll head up into the sky. I love going over to the laptop and seeing everybody painting. It makes me happy. Everybody's working away. Oh, so um, for those of you that are joining us for the first time tonight, welcome. So happy to have you here. For my, uh, for my old souls that are with me every week, welcome. So happy to have you here. So um, let me put this out there. I like to put it out there early. There will come a point that I will call this painting done. Uh, usually right around nine o'clock, nine, nine fifteen, something like that. We'll call the painting done. I will then give you from the time we call it done, I'll give you one hour to private message a picture of, I love seeing you with your paintings. So a picture of just your painting if you want or you with your paintings, private message that to Crooked Door Studio on Facebook, or email me, some of you email me, and at the end of the hour, I will collect all those paintings and all those pictures and put them together in a collage that I can put out and share on, uh, on Facebook, Facebook and Instagram. Because if we were at the studio at the end of class, we would all get together for a big group picture. But since we can't do that, this is what we can do, okay? So two more minutes and we're gonna move on. And again, that doesn't have to be dry. We're gonna move up into the sky, which will give that time to dry. While we're, uh, while we're paused, we've got another minute here before we move on. I do have my, I know I said we're gonna move on with black up in the top of the sky, but I do have my brush in my water cup because I don't want it to dry out. But when I pull that brush back out of my water cup, I'm not worried about it being clean. I'm fine if there's black in it because I'm gonna put black back in it. But I do have it camped out in my water cup so it doesn't dry out. Okay, it's 7.30. Let's go ahead and move on. So let's break the sky into three sections. So this top third is very, very dark, very dark. So we're gonna use black up there. This middle section is blue and white. And then when we get down to this last third-ish section, there's that, there's blue and white, and then there's yellow right down there, which gives us the idea of sun slash moon, okay? We're not gonna put that on yet. We're gonna put that on later. But think about every place that you want that bright yellow down here, leave, we'll get your sky nice and white. It'll be a lot easier to put yellow over top of white than it will be to put it over top of blue. So I want you to pretend that everything that's yellow right here, pretend for now it's gonna be white. 
Okay. All righty. So let's see. Usually when we paint skies, we do like a figure eight. Or sometimes when we paint skies, we go side to side. This sky is very, it's kind of all over the place, isn't it? There's lots of fun stuff happening in there. I love that this almost creates a heart right there above the sun slash moon. So let's go up to this top third and let's work on black first. So I have my big brush, pulled it out of the water and I'm just wiping it off. I'm gonna take some black and I think I'm gonna go with this um, infinity sign stroke. So it's an X, but it's very flat. It's like I'm creating an infinity symbol, but I'm missing the round parts. Okay. And maybe a quarter or a third down. That's about it. It can come down maybe a little further down there. Maybe it stays up a little higher here. And I'm going to take the time and get this Tippy top edge. Remember, it's easier to paint your edges now than it is to try to match them up later. So I'm painting black across there, but I'm not making a real hard line with it. I'm gonna have to step away and get a little more black. Didn't give myself quite enough. You know, we don't like to waste paint, right? There we go. Okay, real uneven line. So when I'm done with that, I'm gonna pop my brush in my water cup. I'm gonna go get a little more black while I'm uh, while I'm waiting on you guys to get to this spot because I know I'm gonna need the black for the trees. Okay. So when you have that little bit of black there, rinse your brush out. Not clean water time yet, but rinse your brush out really good. Okay. Okay, so I'll take that big brush, clean it out, tap, tap, tap in the bottom of the cup. Dry it off on my paper towel. Now that black is still wet and that's okay. That'll help me get a little blend. So I'm gonna move into some blue. I'm gonna work it up into my black a little and down. Now remember, it's very, there's a lot of movement up in there. So try not to paint in like straight lines across. So you see how I'm working this blue down a little bit here. A little blue up here into my black. Once I get this basic blue on there, I'm gonna start to add in little bits of white. So maybe I have some white in through there, some blue, a little bit of white. The thing to remember is acrylic paint blends while it's wet. 
once it's dry, it will not blend. And again, this is going to look different than the original because the original sky, I believe, is in watercolor. So your sky is going to look however it's going to look. And if you get, if you're getting something that you're not sure you like how it looks, try something different. What if you scrumble, right? What if you, what if you scribble your sky in there? That's kind of fun. That does something different, doesn't it? I'm gonna take a little more white. I do a little scribble. It's easy enough to change while it's wet, right? If I get something that I don't like what, what it's doing, choo -choo 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 -choo, send it away. We're gonna work down toward our horizon line and remember, wherever you see yellow, it needs to be white. So as we work our way down, I'm going to use less blue and more white, getting it nice and bright white right here in the middle. That'll make it easier for our uh, yellow. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I kind of dig the scribble, that little scribble scrumble there. Blue here. Whatever your technique is going to be, right? What if you used a paper towel and you did a little scrumble with a paper towel? You could do that. We're not tied to brushes tonight, right? Trying to dig in the little scribble. This is one of those times where if I had one of my uh, one of my old crappy brushes that's really seen better days, that's all like splayed out and kind of dried out. That would be a fun brush to use for this, right? Because it would be all splayed out. It would be really easy to get that <laughs> scrumble feel. But I'm just gonna keep going with the brush I have. Bring that white up a little. Trying to stay really irregular. A little bit more down here. <laughs> You'll see though I'm working, um, I'm working top down. I'm not jumping around a lot to different sections because I know acrylic paint only blends while it's wet. Once it's dry, it essentially turns to plastic it will not blend. Okay. So I'm getting it just the way I want it and slowly moving down. And I want to get lighter and lighter and lighter as I go down. That's going to make it easier to put that yellow on later. I can get some bright white up in here. Woo! Love that bright white. The trick with the bright white is putting it on there and walking away so you don't blend it all into oblivion, right? That is the trick. And at this point, I'm going to remind you this is all background right? This is where you're not going to pay a whole heck of a lot of attention to it later. We're going to have trees over top of it. When we squint and we look at this painting, we don't necessarily notice the sky right away, right? We see that little bright spot of um, sun slash moon. We see that path, but we don't pay a lot of attention to what's going on up in here. 
So remember that we're going to put other things over top. And I'm working my way down to the horizon, trying to get brighter and brighter and brighter. Now, if you're having a hard time getting lighter as you go down, you might have to rinse your brush out and you might have to take clean, clean white. So I'm using out of the same spot right here and it has a little bit of blue in it. I might move over here and use out of the clean white section if you're having a hard time getting bright white. But again, it's gonna make it a lot easier when you get down close to that horizon. It's gonna make it a lot easier to add yellow if you get really, really light white there. Light white, light blue, light white, you know, you know what I mean. I'm going right down to my horizon line. It's getting a little messy, but that's okay. I can fix it with that blue-green later. Not gonna get too messy, but it's okay if I get a little messy. And you see how I'm working the right side and the left side because I wanna get nice and light because I get right there to the center. So I've done this side, I'm gonna work over here now. Oh, edges, don't forget our edges, right? Easier to match them now than it is to try to match them later. Step over here and get this side. It's funny, as I look at this, as I'm painting it, I'm like, ooh, that's a hot mess. But when I turn around to look at it on my screen, because I have my phone in selfie mode so I can see what's happening, I kind of like it. I like it. This, is, uh, this white streak is a bit much for me. I'm going to play up there a little bit. But my reminder to you, don't get too hung up on it. You're sitting this far away from it, right? And you're gonna start to tear it apart. Walk away from it, take a picture of it, turn your back and look at the picture. I'll do that if I'm working on something and I'm not sure how it's going. You will see it differently on your camera than you see it in, in person. So weird, but that's the way it works, right? The way our brains work. Your camera on your phone will pump up the contrast and you'll see it differently. I know I said don't jump around, but I keep taking little, little bits of bright white and heading up here and getting these little bright white crests up there on my, some of my clouds. It's hard to do when that's wet, but once it starts to dry, you get little bright white pops up there. Just playing. Just playing. And again, my goal is to get this bright, bright white right here. So I'm going to take this opportunity and clean my brush out and finish this out trying to keep it as light as I can. I'm 
Okay. I like to try to be respectful of everyone's time. It's 746. I'm going to finish this white out here. And then I'm going to want things to dry a little bit, I think, before we move on. So how about 8 o'clock? We all come back together. So by 8 o'clock, um, this should be pretty dry. So we can get some yellow in there. We'll move on to our stars. We'll start to get our path in there, our trees, and then our greenery, or our greenery and then our trees. Just gotta think about that, how we're gonna do that. So eight o'clock, at eight o'clock, you'll want clean white, clean water. and we'll be ready to put our yellow one there and then work on our stars. Okay, sound like a plan? Eight o'clock. Clean white, clean water. We'll go from there. Okay, I'm gonna put my brush by water cup. Walk away, I'm gonna stop touching it. Okay, um, eight o'clock, so we have 12 minutes. Clean water, clean white, um, the teeniest bit of yellow, and we'll move on from there. I'm gonna want this part of my canvas dry, so when I put that little bit of yellow in there, I need to make sure if I have any wet blue there, that that wet blue is dry because if it's not blue and yellow, you'll have green in your sky, okay? So eight o'clock, we'll move on. I wanna make sure just this part, the center part of my canvas is dry, clean white, clean water, toothbrush. All righty. And if you're done, if you're ready to move on, um, go get yourself a beverage, chill out a little bit. Think I need a refill? Oh, Jeannie, I love that. That makes my heart so happy. <laughs> I love it. Oh, so I am, um, if there's young ears on here, I'm sorry, but I'm a promo whore. I will put the studio logo on absolutely anything and everything. And a long time ago, I said, I, I would love to find big magnets 
and put the studio logo on them so that you could give to moms and dads and aunts and uncles at Christmas time. So you could give them a painting and you could give them the magnet so they could hang it on the fridge. I just think that'd be hysterical, but that's just me. My other, um, my other promo idea is I need to find straws that are, ooh, about as tall as a wine bottle. And at the top of them, I need a little Crooked Door Studio logo. Not that I would put a straw in an entire bottle of wine, but should the occasion arise, it would be there and you would be ready. So anyway, that's fabulous, Jeannie. I absolutely adore that. That makes my heart happy. Okay, I am going to go rinse my brushes out and get clean water. I'm gonna get some clean white paint. Um, you may have seen me mess in here a minute ago. I got a clean, uh, a clean plate because I'm not gonna have room on this plate to be able to mix um, for my stars. So I have enough clean white paint on there, but I need to make sure I have a plate to be able to do some, some, um, some mixing. Well, mixing, I need to water that paint down a little bit for stars. Okay, so we have eight minutes. I'll be back. I love that, Tani. Mom, moms love moms love paintings, right? Moms always love their kids' creativity, right? I'll never forget my girls were little, and some of the stuff they brought home, and anybody else would look at it and be like, "Ooh, what is that?" And I'd be like, "My baby, my baby made me a whatever it was," because I was never quite sure what it was, right? Oh, okay, seven minutes. Seven minutes, we need clean water, toothbrush, clean white paint, and this part of the canvas dry. Just this, this middle section, like stretch out your hand as big as it'll go, and that's the part I want dry. And a little bit of yellow paint. So six minutes, I will be right back. I hear a ruckus in the, uh, in the chicken yard. So I'm gonna go check that out. Six minutes, I'll be right back. Okay, about another four minutes and we're gonna move on. Try and decide if I need to go to the blow dryer. Don't think so, I think I'm okay. But you do wanna make sure this part of your canvas is dry 
because we're going to put a little bit of yellow on there next. You want to make sure that blue is dry. Okay. Oh, and I just came back from the ruckus in the in the chicken yard. Did you know I love to tell stories to uh, to uh, to move the time along? So I've talked about them before. I have chickens, and we got babies in the spring. We had an established flock with a rooster named George, and he's lovely. He's absolutely adorable. So we got babies in the spring, and I didn't realize we ordered all females, but I didn't realize that there's always this is evidently well known and I didn't know it. I have learned. There's always a 10% chance, not 10% chance. There's always, you're likely to get when you get ladies, when you get female chicks, that 10% of them will be male. 10% will be roosters. I didn't know that. I thought, oh, we're getting all girls. No, no. So my two batches I got this past spring, we wound up with two with two roosters. So not ideal. Cockfight is a real thing. Not an ideal situation. Um, but because we have an established rooster, George, and he's big, he's big and beautiful. He's keeping everybody in line. He's keeping all the ladies in line. He's keeping the roosters, the two young whippersnappers in line. But every now and then I'll hear something going on over there and be like, oh God, oh, what's happening? And it's usually George running. Um, they're keeping their female names because in this house, love is love. We don't care, right? We don't do gender stereotypes in this household. So Betty, our one rooster, she, she's usually up to something, up to some shenanigans. So when I hear a ruckus, it's usually George running Betty off. And Betty, she's little and squirrely and she just takes off a run and she's kind of a cartoon. And then our other rooster's name is Laverne, which is easily shortened to Vern. So we have Laverne, Betty, and George. Those are our three roosters. Anyway, another minute and we'll be ready to move on. Again, make sure the center part of your canvas is dry. Um, you need some clean white paint, a little yellow. Just a teeny, teeny, tiniest bit of yellow. Um, clean water and a toothbrush for stars. And we're, when we put those stars on there, we'll talk about it, but make sure whatever you have behind you, you don't care about. Because it's real hard to uh, flick stars on there and control them, <laughs> says the voice of experience. Okay. So another Another few seconds here. Okay, I'm gonna take one last look at the center of this and make sure. Um, if I'm looking to see if it's still wet, if you pick it up in the light, you will see where it's shiny is where it's still wet. And I can see where it's shiny, it's just white paint. I'm okay with that. Looks like the blue is all dry. Okay, so let's start, let's not do the stars yet. Let's put the yellow on there. And a little bit of yellow is gonna go a long way. And the yellow that we're using, the yellow that I'm using, and if you got paint from me, it's the yellow you're using, the Blick Student Acrylic Yellow. It's gonna be very transparent and you're gonna see right through it if you have any blue and it's gonna look green. So I'm gonna take my big brush and mix it, mix my yellow with white. I'm gonna say half and half. I don't even think half and half. I think three quarters white, quarter yellow. Cause I want it to be, I don't want it to be her yellow. I want it to be just like a real faded yellow right there along that horizon. And I'm gonna paint that in the way I painted my sky. So if you used an infinity sign with your brush, that's how you're gonna put the, the sun in there, the sun slash moon. I did a little scrumble with the rest of my sky. So that's how I'm gonna put my, my sun slash moon in there, my yellow in there. So big brush, dry it off. 
the white that I take, I'm going to make sure it doesn't have any blue in it. So I'm going to pull it right out of the middle. Blurp. And right over here, the tiny, tiniest bit of yellow with it. Okay. Got my white over there. So it's like three quarters white, quarter yellow. It's giving me a real light, pretty yellow color. And this is the tiniest bit of paint, right? A little bit is going to go a long way. And I'm going to start right here at my horizon. And I'm scrumbling because that's how I did my, my uh, clouds. I'm going to get close because that's real hard to see. So start right here, that nice bright spot, and work out from there. Maybe I have a little that goes, ooh, maybe a little goes over that way. Maybe a little goes one up in there. Maybe some of it goes over here a little. That's pretty much all I'm gonna do. Maybe. I think I'm gonna take up just the tiniest bit of yellow, a little bit more, and get just a little bit darker right here. Uh, darker is probably the wrong word, bolder yellow. Right here, oh, right as the sun is setting right there. It's so subtle. Get a little bolder, right there, right. That's my bright spot of my paint, right? My perspective, my little point back there. Go. All right. Now, I have clean water and I don't want to monk up my clean water. So I'm going to wipe that brush. I'm going to wipe the excess paint on my paper towel. So I've wiped the excess paint off and I'm just going to set it down in my water cup. Not going to squish it around because I don't want to change that clean water. I don't want to mess up that clean water yet. Okay. So I'll give you another minute to get your little bit of yellow on there. And we're going to get ready and put some stars in the sky. So I'm going to use toothbrush to do that. If you don't have a toothbrush, you can take your small brush and use the other end of it, use the handle and do some dots up in there. We want the, the concentration of stars to be in the darkest part of the sky, right? That's the way it would be in nature. You're not gonna see a lot of stars until you get in the really dark part of the, of the sky. You can have some that come down in here into the blue, that's okay. But I'm going to use, so if you don't have a toothbrush, that's your option. But I have a toothbrush. So I'm going to take my toothbrush. If you haven't splattered stars before, stick with me here for a second. And let me show you. I'm going to take this toothbrush in my water cup. I'm going to dip it down in. And I'm going to go tap, tap, tap. Just three taps. So I still have a little bit of water in there, but not a lot. I'm gonna take a chunk of clean white paint. I'm kind of digging in the middle here, like a big old chunk of clean white paint. And I'm gonna to go to a clean spot on my plate. I have to go to another plate because I don't have a clean spot. And then I'm gonna go scrub, scrub, scrub. I'm using that water in the toothbrush, that little drip of water that was left in there, to thin that paint down. So I'm scrubbing like I'm scrubbing the floor, right? Scrub, scrub, scrub. Get the chunks out. Tap those chunks out of there. Okay. Now be careful, whatever's behind you, you're gonna get, you could get splattered. So I'm gonna hold it bristles up. I'm gonna point it at the painting and I'm gonna pull my finger across toward me and it'll fly back that away. I'm actually gonna hold this behind to protect. Oh, right off the bat, I got a, uh, I got a stringer. I'm okay with that. It's one of those things when you uh, do stars, you have to be okay with whatever happens. 
what it's going to be is what it's going to be. And I got like a funny, a funny string. If it bothers me, I'll put a tree there, right? Piece of cake, problem solved. It's only a problem if you let it be a problem, right? Okay, so brush and water cup. I pop my toothbrush in there. I'm not gonna overthink it. Give you a couple minutes to get your stars on there and then we'll move on. I think we'll do our path next. Get our path on there. So I'm feeling like we're gonna do our path. And then our greenery, our green grasses, and then our trees. Oh, and then our um, lightning bugs. I think that's how we're gonna, that's how this is gonna work out. Okay. So let's take another minute and get those stars on there. Okay, let's move on to path. So my path, it's brown, black, and white. You might think just brown and white, and you can do just brown and white if you want, but I think I'm gonna add the tiny, tiniest bit of black in there to get it a little gray. It's gonna take just the littlest bit though, the littlest bit of black. And I think I'm going to use my medium brush so I can get up in here in this point. Remember, it's perspective, right? So you want it to stay real skinny up here. It's going to come up and just disappear right up there. And the way I'm going to put my path in, I'm going to paint side to side, kind of like we do with water. When we paint water, we always stay, our brush strokes are parallel to the bottom. I'm going to do the same kind of thing here. And I know whatever mess I make over here at the edge, I can fix with my grass, with my ground. So I'm gonna take a chunk of this brown and right here in the edge of this black and white, I'm gonna play a little. I'm not gonna do a lot of mixing because I want it to, to vary and be different colors. I don't want it to be all the same shade of brown. So I've got kind of a messy, muddy little puddle here that's got a little brown, a little black, a little white. It's very marbly. And the beauty of this is it's already dry. So I can lay my hand down. And I'm just going side to side. It's very gray. I feel like I want some more, want a little more brown in there. The, um, the Blick Student Acrylic Brown is very transparent. It's very, very weak. So the tiniest bit of white and the tiniest bit of black are really gonna overpower that brown. So I'm just scribbling, let me get close so you can see what I'm doing. I'm laying my hand down here and I'm just scribbling side to side. Keeping all my brush strokes parallel-ish to the bottom. Okay, let's paint that whole path in that way.
my path is changing from from brown to kind of gray to kind of tan. It's dancing in those different those different shades of gray. I'm okay with that. It's just a worn dirt path. If you're, um, it doesn't it doesn't appear that way on this um, on this inspiration picture. But if you're looking for a little a little more realism, you can stay a little darker back toward your perspective and then get as it as the path moves closer to you you can get lighter um, again the uh, the inspiration picture doesn't show that but if you wanted to do that you absolutely could that would add a little more realism getting lighter as you come as you come closer to the viewer I like the idea too of keeping my path a little lighter in the middle and a little darker on the edges. So it looks like the path is a little raised and it kind of falls away a little at the edges. You could certainly reverse that if you wanted. There's so many different ways you can do this. You could get darker in the middle and lighter at the edges so it looks like your path is worn deep down in. So many ways to approach this. And none of them are wrong. They're all right. It's whatever your path looks like in your world. It occurs to me, this would be really easy if you didn't want to do a path, you could turn this into water, right? That might be kind of fun. If you use blue and white instead of, instead of brown, you'd have a nice little, a nice little river there. Okay. Got my path on there. Go a little darker. A little darker there along the edges a little bit. Looks a little gravelly there along the edges. Okay. There we go. There we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and clean that brush out and I'm going to get ready and put some uh, green and blue down here on top of this black. Now remember the reason we painted that black is because all our paint without black or white is very transparent. I would have to add way too much white to make it less transparent or way too much black you would lose all the beautiful color so we put the black on there first so now we don't have to add white to it if we don't want we don't have to add black to it if we don't want okay so let's go ahead i'm gonna leave that path alone because i'm not going to overthink it i've just got some messy brown on there let's go ahead and put our green and our blue down in here and we've got it there's some hills there not going to worry too much about those right now because i'm going to do that with a little bit of white maybe a little white little yellow 
and I don't want to add white yellow too soon because it'll brighten the whole thing up and it'll start to look very pastel. So I've got, I'm using my medium brush. Let's start with just phthalo green and see how we feel about that. Oh, I like that. Kind of scribble in there. Oh, that's nice. Just kind of scribbling. It's so hard to see, I know, because it's so dark. But it's that little bit of green in there. It's really hard to see. Like I can't, oh, there we go. There's an angle where you can kind of see it. Green. I'm sticking with just green for now. I might add a little, a little bit of blue. I'm gonna hold off on adding any white or any yellow until I'm ready to put those, um, those little hills in. I don't wanna add any, any white or yellow too soon because again, it will, um, it'll take over the whole painting. It'll, it'll turn everything very pastel. So kind of scribble in. Put my green down on there. And the thing to remember, acrylic paint blends when it's wet, right? So I'm gonna move kind of fast. Put green down there. You can leave some of the black show through if you want. And then just by nature of the, the uh, paint being transparent, some of the black is gonna show through. That's okay. Especially out toward those edges, leaving some of that black show through. Okay, so I've got green on my left side. Now, if I want to brighten it up right here, because the sun is going to hit this bright spot right here, I'm going to take this little yellow light that I have from my sun. I have green on my brush. I'm going to add just the tiniest bit of yellow white. And it's really going to pop when I put it on there. Oh, that's a lot but I'm doing it while this green back here is still wet so I can blend it in. Okay. That's incredibly bright, but that green back there is still wet. And I'm using the tiniest bit of yellow white and fading it over into that dark green. getting that nice bright spot. I'm using the tiny, tiny, tiniest bit of paint. It really is very little. If you, I, I'm sure you probably can't hear it, but from where I'm at, I can hear my brush on the canvas scraping because I'm not using, it's almost a dry brush. I'm not using very much paint at all. So now I've got that nice bright spot right there. I feel like I want another, another little bright spot, maybe right down in here. So I've got wet green down there. I didn't get a little more, a little more wet green down there. And let's do that again. So I've got wet green down there and I'm taking a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow, the tiny, tiniest bits teeny, 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 tiny bit. I don't have hardly anything on my brush at all. And I'm gonna start in the brightest spot right here. I want this to be the brightest and I want it to fade over. So, ooh, when I very first put it on there, it's like, Rrr, what have I done? Okay, but then I'll start pulling it out that way, pulling it out into the darker section.
and it kind of fades as it goes and it turns into that dry brush noise. You have to do all of this while it's wet. There we go. Pretty much it. Like I want a little bright spot right there too. I feel like the, the sunlight would hit this spot right there. So wet green, always starting with that wet green. And I've just done the left side so far. I'll move over to the right side in a minute. So just starting with wet green, then tiny, tiny white, tiny, tiny yellow. I can't emphasize enough how tiny that amount is super duper tiny started oh oh because it looks so aggressive when i very first start and then fade it out into the green if it's not fading out into the green like you think it should take your brush wipe it off on your paper towel and get back in there with just just that dry brush Okay, so I'm going to head over to the other side and do the same thing. On the other side, I'm going to do my greens and then I'm going to start to get a couple, maybe a couple little hills. I feel like this is a point where I should remind everyone to breathe. Take a big deep breath, let it out. It's going to be brighter, closer to your path and fade, that's what's gonna lead your eye in, is getting that brighter color closer to your back. Right. When I put that green on, I'm actually starting closer to my path and just drawing it out to nothing. Leaving that dark over there. I want the concentration of color to be closest to that path. And then drawing it away to nothing on that side. I'm gonna want a hill right here. I'm going to want another hill right, right in there. Okay, so my green is wet. Tiny white, tiny yellow. Close to my, ooh. Close to my path. Fade it out into the green. Pull it out. Pull it out. Yeah, let's see here so I'm going to pronounce that a little more with my yellow white. Fade it down into the green. I feel like the more paintings we do we start to uh, we've done a lot of dry brushing huh? Acrylic paint is lovely because it dries so fast. Acrylic paint is a pain in the butt because it dries so fast. Um, it's, it gets really hard to blend because it dries so quickly. But that's where that dry brushing comes, um, comes in handy. 
So that's something you, you could practice. A little bit of dry brushing. And by dry brushing, I mean I have the tiniest bit of paint on my brush and I'm scribbling with it. Because the littlest bit of white on a black canvas goes a long way. So I am scribbling with a brush that's nearly dry without, without much paint on it at all. Okay. Well, let's take another minute because I know this is something we could play with forever. You can just get that all green down there if you want. That's entirely up to you. Really no right or wrong here. I do think I'm gonna take some green and a little bit of black and I'm gonna come right along here with the green and black and fix up the edge of my path a little. Again, I can't use just green. I have to add a little bit of black to it to make it solid. The green is too transparent. But a little bit of green with my black to fix the edge of my path if it got messy. I'm doing just a little, just a little scribble. Okay. That little bit of green black really helps the edge of my path. Okay, we're gonna get ready and put trees in. I feel like it's, it's time for me to remind you too, if this isn't going the way you think it should be going, take a break, put your brushes down, walk away, sometimes we have to do that, come back to it tomorrow, going to fix. I know I want my path to come back to a nice point. That's my perspective, right? Helping it disappear into nowhere. So I'm going to get in here and fix this. Fix my path just a little tiny bit. Right back. Make it disappear. There we go. Okay. All righty, trees, trees. So I'm looking at the trees. Let's talk a little bit about trees before we put them on there. Okay. So my trees, I'm going to paint them in uh, black first. And then while they're wet, I'm gonna get some highlights on them. So remember where our light source is. So my trees on this side, the light, the uh, highlight on the tree is gonna be closest to my light source. So closest to the sun slash moon. And it's gonna be on the other side on these. Okay. Let's talk about branches too. Anytime we put, most of these trees are just straight up. They're a little wider at the bottom and then they just go straight up and off the top of the canvas. If you're gonna put branches on, think why. It's gonna be a Y shape. Don't ever start a branch here and pull down because it looks broken. You're gonna start on your tree and do like a Y. So up and away, like a Y shape. All my branches, up and away. Okay. So let's see, I have, four on this side, oh, and four on this side. 
look at there. Let's start with a couple of these guys on the left side. They're real close to the horizon. Okay. And I want, um, I want those guys to be a little faded, a little lighter. I'm gonna use, I think I'm gonna use my medium brush, but for those I'm gonna use it skinny ways. These couple little guys right back in here. And I'm gonna start out with my, my medium brush skinny ways, and I'm just gonna go up and off the top. I'm gonna use some black. Start with just black. Maybe some blue. Maybe teeny, 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 tiny bit of white. This is all very negotiable. And let's put one. Starts at the horizon. Again, I'm using that medium brush skinny ways. Trees are a little fatter at the bottom and they get skinnier as they go up and up. Ooh. I always like to say this is um, this is like the Bob Ross moment of the painting where we have this gorgeous painting and then I'm like, let's put black lines all across it, right? Because Bob would always do that, right? So these trees back here, I want them to be a little faded away. So I'm gonna take a little bit of blue and a little bit of white and go back over that. And that little bit of blue and white, it's gonna help it fade away. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the tree right next door. A little blue, a little white, brush skinny ways. Let's put him pretty close to that guy right here up and away put the back and get his little feet little feet that I think is all I'm gonna do for those guys with that brush I'm gonna if I'm gonna put more branches on those I'm gonna use a smaller brush but while I still have this one nice and loaded up with the right paint with that a tiny bit of black, little blue, little white. I'm going to do a small tree over on this side too. So it looks like on the left side, there's two little trees, two big trees. On the right side, one little tree, three big trees. So let's go ahead and put that other little tree over here. I've got two on this side, one over here. And he sits right about there. So I've got a little dirty black on my brush, and then a little bit of blue, a little bit of white. And then I'm gonna put this, uh, this brush in my water cup for now. Go to my pointy brush and put smaller branches on there. Remember, anytime you do branches, think why. You're gonna go up and away. So I've got a little white, little blue, little messy tiny bit of black. My branches here. Start here on your tree. Up and away. Up and away. Up and away. This is one of those things I do and I don't notice I'm doing it. Um, so I've been painting trees my whole life. Pretty much, pretty much my whole life, 36 years anyway. I will twirl my brush when I paint branches. That way I'm using paint all the way around my brush. So let me get close and show you, show you a couple branches here. So I'm gonna start on my tree and I'm gonna pull up and away and I'm kind of twirling it as I go. And come back down. Up and away. It's 
do that again over here on this side. Get some paint, some blue, blue, little white, little black. So over here, start on my tree, set it down. And I'm holding my brush like parallel to the canvas, not perpendicular. I'm holding it parallel to the canvas and twirling as I drag it across. All right, those are background trees. Those are the little ones. Now we need to get some that are a little bit bigger. They're gonna be a little closer to us. So they're gonna be a little bit bigger. And then we're gonna put smaller branches on them. So because they're closer to us and they're a little bit bigger, I'm gonna start them down a little further. Go back to my medium brush. And I don't have to use it skinny ways if I don't want this time. I can use it fat ways. So let's get this guy. Right here, up and, up. and I think him, I'm gonna start him with just black. The smaller ones, I wanted them to be faded away. A little closer to me, I want them to be a little bolder. Stack right. Here. Don't forget, give him, give him feet. And when I say give him feet, I'm just splaying him out a little at the bottom. Make some roots. That guy, and then ooh, I'm gonna get a I'm get a big guy right in here. Oh, maybe where's he gonna go? Right here, I suppose. And he's a little bigger, so he's gonna start down a little further. The trees are up to you. You can put as many trees on there as you want, or as few trees as you want. As you put your trees on there, though, I would encourage you to start them at different places different different distances apart um, the only place you would have trees that would be all the same shape and all the same distance it would be a tree farm right and that's not what we're going for here we're out in nature right so we want them to be all different shapes and heights and widths different branches I think I'm going to go ahead while I've got black on my brush, move over to the right side and put some trees. I've got one right here that sits kind of behind this hill. Trees are one of those things you can spend so much time on, putting all kinds of detail. So I'm just gonna show you just, just the basics here. You can take it to the next level if you want, up to you. I don't know, I might stay with three trees on this side. I might do one, one right down here and call it. I don't feel like four trees on that side. I just feel like three on that side. Okay. There we go. So I've done the main part uh, with the medium brush in black. I'm gonna move to my little brush, to my pointy brush and get some branches on there, and then I'm gonna put some highlights on. And I like those branches to reach all the way up and off, all the way up and off the top.
Okay, so again, I could play in branches forever, but in an effort to get us done at a decent hour tonight, I'm gonna move on. So remember, um, we have to do highlights, right? So what are my highlights gonna be? I think I wanna do a little white and a little blue for highlights. You could just do gray, like the light gray if you wanted. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of blue in there. So for my trees on the left, the light side is gonna be on the right because that's the direction my sun moon is coming from. So with my little brush, I have a little bit of um, blue white on there. And I'm going to come down the right side of these trees and give them a nice, a nice light blue highlight. More in some places, less in others. It's a very subtle thing. I feel like this painting tonight is all is full of all kinds of subtleties. in the right side of the trees on the left and the left side of the trees on the right. I'm not gonna highlight everything, but I'm gonna hit the main, um, the main trunks. And maybe like this branch, I feel like he would really get a highlight. Like the sun would really be hitting. So we'll give him a lovely one. more blue. Okay. Oh, I need to highlight that one last big tree over there. Okay. Again, you can continue to play with your highlights. Step away from your painting if you need to. See what you're missing. Go back in and play a little more. These little, the our little tiny trees in the background, you could give them highlights too. So if I go a lot lighter blue. But just remember to keep your highlight on the correct side. I almost said keep your highlight on the right side. Keep your highlight on the correct side. So again, if my if my sunlight, if my light source is in the middle, my trees on the left are gonna have highlights on the right, and my trees on the right are gonna have highlights on the left, because that's the way the light is gonna hit them. Okay. So let's see, we have, we're getting down to it. We have one more thing to do, other than signing our painting. One more thing. Let's put a little fire, a, a few little fireflies in there. Okay. So let me show you how to do that. So whether you're ready to move on or not, let me show you that because you can keep painting even after I sign off tonight. So let me show you how we're gonna do fireflies. There's a couple of them. Looks like there's two over here. And one, two, three over here. You have as many as you want. But I'm going to show you how I would put fireflies on there. We're going to dry brush again. I'm going to take my little brush and clean it out really good and dry it off really good. I want to make sure that little brush is nice and dry. I'm going to take the tiniest, tiny, tiny, tiniest bit of white paint. You can do white, you can do white and light yellow if you want. I'm gonna start with white and see how it makes me feel. I have the tiniest bit of white paint and I'm gonna wipe it off. I always use my hand for this because I can tell because my hand isn't white, right? Uh, my hand is a peach color, so I can actually tell how much paint I have on my brush. So I'm wiping it off so I have the tiniest bit of white paint on that pony brush. 
and I'm going to do the glow with the firefly first. So let's put one right here. And I'm going to go around and around and around. That is a lot, isn't it? Smooth that out with my finger. Do another one right here. You really don't want any paint at all on your brush for this. The tiniest bit of white in that dark canvas is going to go a long way. I'm going to do a nice bright one right here. Well, now I don't have any. <laughs> now I don't have any paint on my brush. So I'm doing that little dry brush circle first. And then I'm going to use the other end of my brush. And right in the middle, I'm going to do a little, boop, little firefly. So I have that dry brush first, and then a little boop, little bright spot right there in the middle. Boop. So I have that glow, that dry brush glow, and then that bright firefly right there in the middle. Ta-da! Do a couple more over on this side, and then I think call it done. I think, I think. Had to reload my brush, which meant I had to go back to the back of my hand and wipe it off. You don't, again, you don't have to use your hand if you don't want, but I have a hard time on a paper towel or a paper plate telling how much paint I have on my brush. If I use my hand, I know exactly how much paint I have on there. And there we go. All right. I feel like we worked really hard for this one tonight. But I love it. I love the way it turned out. Again, different than the original, but yet quite lovely. Quite lovely. So with that, I think I'm going to sign mine and call it done. Um, my reminder to you please sign your paintings. You don't have to sign on the front if you don't want, but it's nice to have something to look back later to know who did it. So with your stretched canvases, you can sign on the edge if you would like with a, with a paint pen or a Sharpie. If you're gonna sign on the front, artists usually sign um, down at one of the corners, bottom, bottom left or bottom right. You can sign on the back with a Sharpie or paint pen, never ever here, always out here on the edge. You don't want it to bleed through. And um, it's always lovely if you put a date with it too. So I will sign mine SS blah, 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 for my signature and then a little tick and a 20. So we remember um, that we painted it in 2020. That's probably the only thing from this year we'll ever want to remember because this year's been a hot mess. So I will um, go ahead and stop recording now and give you, I'll give you the opportunity to unmute yourselves if you want. I feel like a lot of you are still just a painting away, doing your thing, which is fantastic. So thank you all, before I stop recording, thank you all so much for joining me tonight, painting through the pandemic. This has been lovely. This has been just what I needed tonight. So thank you all for that. You guys are great.